And do you feel that you can um, connect with your fan base or your new fans in in a more uh, one-on-one way now through the auspices of the Internet, through the MySpaces, through any kinds of communication? Because people can communicate in a, in a great way now. Yes, and, I'm, and I must say I was slow to learn, mm-hmm. and I am slow to learn the, the whole process of MySpace and YouTube and all those things. But when I do get on them, and I just I just actually sign on for Skype. Skype is, is that the name? When you can see the person that you're talking to on yes, the phone, yes. Skype. And so I'm becoming much more familiar with what you can do on the Internet. And I've gone to various spaces that have videos of you know, songs that I that I have done, you know, that they've made home videos of mm-hmm. Mockingbird or You're So Vain or or Anticipation. And it's really, really cool to see that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And I want to make my own videos from home and put them up on MySpace. Or, and you can. Yeah. And you will. And there is, there is a, you know, I do have a site, which is, uh, which is carlysimon.com, which you can go to and see who thinks You're So Vain is about what. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> Talking about which, wasn't there a little auction for that? Um, what is it, in 2003? That's right. There was an auction on Martha's Vineyard for um, where we raise money e- uh, every year for for the community services there. And, and, and my dear late friend, Art Buckwald, was the auctioneer. Oh. And there was one year that we auctioned off um, you know, the answer to the secret of who you're so vain is. And Dick Ebersol won the prize and came over to my house. He didn't tell me that he was bringing nine of his friends with him, <laughs> but I did I did tell them and sworn to secrecy. So, and of so course he had to sign something, right? That's right. He had to sign something that, that he would never tell anybody, and so did all the other people who were there that night. And I gave them peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and vodka. <laughs> so that was a part <laughs> of the prize, too. But they <laughs> gave, the, you know, the, the prize went for like $60,000 for the Martha's Vineyard Community Services. So Fabulous. That's, it's, it's a really in, interesting and creative way to raise money and, uh, and just to keep this wonderful, you know, concept alive about the song and who it's about. And we just love to think about it and fantasize about it. Speaking of Art Buckwald, what an amazing thing he did when, when he recorded his own eulogy on CNN where he just comes on and says, Hi, I'm Art Buckwald and I'm dead. Yeah. Well, talk about the humorist till the end and oh, beyond, right? So amazing. Yeah. So amazing. And I and I had I had contact with him until the end and I and the book that he wrote called called um uh Too Soon to Say Goodbye. He he gave me that title and I wrote a song which has that title and which is about art and and about its being too soon to leave. Mm-hmm. It's not specifically about art's death, but it's about too soon to say goodbye to whoever you're saying goodbye to. Mm. What did he personally teach you about the exit, the exit of, of our lives? He talked a lot about being... Um, that now he wasn't afraid of death so much because he knew he was going to die, so therefore he accepted it, and he wanted to have an automatic, an automatic tube that went right from his mouth to McDonald's, <laughs> and he wasn't afraid of eating anything bad anymore. He just wanted to eat what he wanted, mm-hmm. and all of his friends came to visit him in the hospice in Washington. He had never felt so important before, and then he lived way beyond the amount of time that right. he was supposed to live and so there was there were columns about how embarrassing it was to be living past the time that he was that everybody had said goodbye to him mm-hmm. and he was just nonstop funny about it and what a great perception of the beyond how great it was to hear from art all about that and going over to his house this past summer and his his leg which was amputated was you know had a had had a big cast on it and and he had it up on the on the chair and everybody came by to see him and I sang him songs and Mike Wallace was always over there and Bill Styron who also died just extremely recently was was also a part of that little that little section on the vineyard which is is um you know, so dear to me because I spent so you know many days there with with those uh, people on you know, um, 
It's really West Chop. It's a continuation of Main Street in, uh, in Vineyard Haven. Have you been to the Vineyard? I Haven? have not personally ever been there. I've been to the the Cape, but never never had a time to go and take get into the water and, and right, go I'm to the island. I'm sorry to be talking so no, specifically. No, that's okay. About I do. It. I've seen photographs of it, of course, and I'm sure a lot of our listeners do. I mean, it's a very popular vacation spot. So uh, you're, you're painting beautiful pictures, and what a wonderful gift he gave you as a friend, and um, that you know it's okay to laugh. It's okay to laugh at all costs, right? At all costs, and you must. And if you don't, you're really going to suffer from not laughing. So, I mean, laughing is really known to be a cure anyway. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember Norman Cousins wrote a book about laughter, and when he was very, very ill, he got all the Marx Brothers movies and all the Three Stooges, and he just watched them over and over and over and laughed himself well. Mm -hmm. And um, and I've been to various swamis and healers who've said, go in front of the mirror and tickle yourself and just... Do it until you feel so silly and you're looking at yourself in the mirror tickling yourself and you've got to laugh because it's just the silliest thing. And then there you are laughing. And especially, you know, if you're in a funny costume or naked or whatever, it does you have to – you do laugh. <laughs> and laughing is great therapy. Absolutely. You know, you, you're from the Bronx. You're from Riverdale, which is the Bronx. Let's Definitely. face it. It's the Bronx. I'm from the Bronx. the Bronx. I read – tell me, is this correct that you were a major – Dodger fan, Brooklyn Dodger fan oh, growing up? Oh, yes. How could you do that? The Yankees in the Bronx. No, no, no. Well, it was all because of Jackie Robinson. And um, Jackie Robinson and his family lived with us in Stamford, Connecticut, which was where our summer home was. During the, the time that he, that he was uh, constructing his home in Stamford. And there was, um, I mean, Stamford was truly quite a segregated community, even though it was sort of lying beneath the surface how segregated it was mm -hmm. in 1955. And my parents went to the the clergymen and the rabbis and the city council and lots of lots of different, you know, politicians and newspapers in Stanford, Connecticut, and revealed this, that it was almost impossible for Jackie Robinson to get a home or a piece of property in Stanford, Connecticut. Mm -hmm. And so they finally won their cause and you know, sort of broke broke the color barrier. And Jackie and Rachel and the kids were, you know, living with us the summer that that Jackie had all these home games at Ebbets Field. And I would drive with him and my father or my brother or you know, my mother or sister to Ebbets Field. And I was at all the home games at Ebbets Field. And that's why I was a Dodger fan, and I eventually got a tiny little uniform because I was about eight years old at the time, and I would sit on Pee Wee Reese's lap oh. during during the games. I, I, you know, and I was their mascot. Oh my God, that is a great story. Do you have a photograph of that? Oh yes, I've got a number of them. I, that that's precious, absolutely precious. Well, I want to thank you for you. We, the time has flown, Carly. Um, before we leave, just again talk about the album, and I'd like to know your favorite song from this collection into? Well, I'll tell you one thing, that the album was com completed and it was mastered and we had the artwork done. And then one day, after it was all done, I came downstairs. I've got a circular stairway from, from my bedroom to the kitchen, which also goes to the basement. Where I, there's, there's no blocking anything off because it was hippies who built the house, me. <laughs> and um, I came down one morning and Ben, my son, and David Saw, his friend, who is is really featured on this album. I'm sorry, did that click? Did that click happen? No, that's okay. Oh, we, okay. Can, we can click. It's just click. water. It's okay. just water, as they say. <laughs> anyway, they were downstairs, and they were singing this song called "I Just I Just Remember You," and um, and I thought it was a Rogers and Hart song because they'd been also working on my funny Valentine, and and. So I said, "What is that song? I've heard that song before, but I don't, I don't know it. But I'm, I'm sure it's a Rogers and Hart song." And they said, al almost, almost at the same time, "Well, we just wrote it." And I said, "That's so beautiful. Play it again. Play it again. Play it again. Teach me. Teach me. Teach me. Teach me on the guitar. Teach me on the piano." I changed the bridge so that I could make it for my voice. And I said, "I'm sorry, but I have to put this on the record. I don't care whether the record is finished. I'm going back. I will pay for this myself. No record company involvement. I'm putting the song on the record. I'm doing it. We'll remaster it at my expense." And I went back in and recorded. I'll just remember you. And could, that's the last cut on the album. Could you, on the spot, I'm going to ask you to just sing a little, little thread for us. 
I don't remember day or night. I don't remember any fights. I don't remember what to do. I just remember you. Oh, that is beautiful. And I have terrible laryngitis, so I sang it really badly. But it's, but it's beautiful, and I can see why you have that feeling of an, of an old standard, an old classic. It's, it's, it's lovely. It's so simple, and the melody is just beautiful, and we were able to do it in a day. It's my going back into the studio for one day and just recording it very, very simply. And I think it's, I think it's a song that is going to live on in a, in a major way. I think a lot of people are going to pick up on this song and want to record it. Well, it's beautiful, and all the best to you with this new CD, Into White. And this is available. Is it on CarlySimon.com? It's on just about everything. You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on my site. You can get it on probably in any any record store that you go to. And Starbucks is also carrying it, except for the ones at the airport, which I just learned are not of the same. They they I, I guess they license the name Starbucks, but but in 